Hello everyone. Good morning and welcome to the class. Good morning. I just started a new instance as I lost my old instance. Can you all see the screen and hear me? Yes. Yes. So let us begin with few other Linux concepts today, particularly user management. Also, uh, till now, um, we were working as a root uh, easy to user, right? If you see easy to user here, yeah, that's a regular default user. And tilde indicates that's a home directory of the user, home easy to user. In Linux, uh, the parent directory starts with a slash. This is nothing but slash or a root. Right, this is the parent path. And you have the subdirectories below it. And whenever you create a user, like easy to user, you may create any other users, like Tom, Jim, whatever. These are all human users. Let's say in a DevOps team, if you have five people, like these could be the names of these people and they log in with the username and they'll have the home directory. Home directory will be created here. Home easy to user. And the directory name would be same as the username. Means whenever you create a user, home directory by the same name of the user will be created automatically. This directory will be used to process or to do any task. If Jim is installing anything, it will go under this path. So home directory will be created automatically. And EC2 user is a default user. And whenever you create a user, again, a group by this name will be created again. Automatically by default. And this user will be added to the group. Group is nothing but suppose if you have five users, all of them have got same permissions, you can create a group and assign the user to that group. Right, that's how users and groups work. Now, let us set the password for this. Actually, is it user is not having any password. If you want to set the password, by the way, first let's see where you can see all the group, all the users. There is a file called let's see password. This is where you can see all the users and their passwords. See root user, default user, so many system user, default users, and easy to user, right? So I want to set password for this user. Password, easy to user. But this can be done, and uh, there is some other user called root user. Root user is called the super user, or else a user with all the super privileges, like admin user, right? Root user will have all permissions. So if I run this password, easy to user, it says only root can specify username. Root can do this, right? Means you should be a root user to do this. So you have to run it with sudo to escalate the sudo means it will run as a root user. Sudo. These are the basics, how you set the username and all. I'm setting a password for this. One second, I just canceled it. user say to user so easy to user has got the password set now and uh, uh, let us create some other user called tom how to set a user how to create a user add user tom right it says permission denied okay so if you want to set the password let's see password We'll set the password, but before that, if you want to see the user, you can see here, Tom should be created. Yeah, because the Tom user is not created. It says permission denied. To create users, to set the passwords, you should be root user, first of all. So to run it as a root, you can add sudo here. So now Tom should be created. He can be seen here now. Do you see in this file, you can see the Tom user, right? And also, like I said, whenever a user is created, he will be added into the group by the same name. Means group called Tom will be created. I want to see the groups of Tom. Groups Tom will give you list of the groups into which this Tom user is added into. He was added into Tom group. 
Similarly, if you want to see the groups of EC2 user, means what are all the groups he was added into, a user can be added into multiple groups. He was into all the groups, EC2 user is one such group. And Tom also added to the EC2 group? No, Tom is not added to EC2 group. Tom is added to Tom group by default. If you want to add, you have to add manually to other groups. All the group information can be checked under EC2 group. Right here, you can see all the groups. Is it possible to add Tom in EC2 group? Possible. We'll have to do those hands-on, okay? So, yeah, uh, if you see the groups of Tom, he was added into Tom group. Okay. If you want to create a separate group, yeah, that is also possible. Like these are all the default groups created, right? If you want to add a group, that is also possible with the group add command, group add DevOps. Permissions denied. You should run it as sudo. Okay. Now group uh, Tom should be created. You can check that under HC groups. Okay, DevOps group is created. And now let's suppose, let's do one thing. Groups of Tom. Okay, now you want to add uh, Tom to DevOps group or else uh, let's say you want to add Tom to DevOps group, just uh, add him, meaning sudo user mod minus G DevOps Tom. Tom will be added to DevOps group. Now, if you check the groups, do you see here? Means it's not appending, it's adding. What is the difference between adding and appending? Or else it's like it will remove him from Tom group and it will add, and it will add him into DevOps group. DevOps group will be his primary group or main group. Right? And okay. if, if you want to delete any group, you can do group del. Oh, this will delete this term. permissions always. Right, Tom group will be deleted. You can see that under HC groups. See, Tom group is not there. Tom group is deleted. And now if you want to add this user, append this user, meaning groups of Tom. He was into DevOps group. Now what I want is if you want to change any groups, user mod, AG, append him to admin group. Append him to admin group. Right? Do you see that? Right. He is not removed from DevOps group. Rather, he was added to some other group. That's the difference between minus AG and minus G. Got the difference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What this will do this will remove Tom from DevOps. Sorry, this will remove Tom from his own group or whatever group he is into and add him to this group. Whereas here he will be this Tom will be added to this group as an additional group or secondary group. He will be still remaining in the other groups. That's what if you see this. He was into DevOps group. He was not removed into but added to admin group. Got it, all of you? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. That's the command. And if you want to remove this Tom from a particular secondary group, you can also do that. G password minus D Tom admin. This will remove Tom from admin group. See, removing user from group admin. See, that's how you remove from the secondary group. This is called secondary group. This is the primary group or the main group. Got it. Right, that's about users and groups. But these users and groups makes more sense when you give the permissions, isn't it? Otherwise, they are meaningless. We are creating group because we have similar permissions with those users. So when you learn about files and permissions, this groups and I mean users and groups may, makes more sense. So uh, let us talk about files and permissions now. Uh, let's do one thing. I'm easy to user now. I logged as an easy to user. 
let me create some files and folders. You may create it any path. I'm creating under TMP folder. Let me create a file called touch demo.txt. So make directory. I'm creating one folder, giving the name as such. If you want to see all the files and folders, you can see. Or else ls minus cell long list. Long list will show you the owners, files, permissions, everything. Right? So, just a second, some beep noise coming back. Okay. So, uh, let, uh, so long list will show you the files and permissions. Here you can see these are nothing but the files and file permissions of this use of this file demo.txt. See here demo.txt folder is shown with a blue color, right? And these are the permissions of this, of the folder. Right? So how to interpret this, right? How to understand this? You have to understand them. First literal indicates whether it is a file or folder. If it is a folder, means D means directory or a folder. Next, you have to understand first three characters. Another set of three characters. This is how you should. You should divide them into three characters. Okay. And the first set indicates these are the permissions of owner of the file. Okay, second set indicates permissions of owner's group. Owner's group. Third set indicates permissions of others. Anything, anyone else who is not a owner, who is not in the owner's group. Right? So, what? who is owner of the file here? You can see this is the owner of the file. Owner's group, owner's primary group is easy to use. Now, uh, here R means read, W means write, X means execute, hyphen means no permissions. So, first set indicates read, write, hyphen means read, write. Owner has got read, write permissions. Owner's group, whoever are in this easy to use a group will also have read, write permissions. Anyone else who is not owner, who is not in the owner's group will have only read permissions. Understood? Same is the case here. First one is directory. See here, read, write, execute. Owner. Again, easy to user is the owner. Owner has got read, write, execute. Owner's group. Anyone in easy to user group has got read, write, execute. Anyone else has read, read and execute. Right? These are the file permissions and this is how you interpret those file permissions. Now, yeah, these are the permissions. Let's do one thing. Um... Uh, uh, let, okay, let's take a Tom user. For this file, what are the permissions Tom user will have? On this file, what are the permissions Tom user will have? Read, write. Any more? Uh, to which category he falls into? Owner, owner's group or others? Owner's group. How do you know he is into owner's group? Is Tom in the owner's group? Is Tom under? Check the groups of Tom. Is Tom under easy to use a group? No. Then how do you know? How come we say that he is in owner's group? Tom falls into which category now? Others. Others, right? Because he is not owner, he is not in owner's group. He comes into others. So what are the permissions of Tom? Only read. Only read. Let's see. Let's see first switch to Tom. Before switching into Tom, let me create some password to Tom. Uh, sudo password Tom. It's prompting for password. You re enter the password now. Switch to Tom. How to switch to any user? SU hyphen username will help you switch. It will prompt for password. See, we became Tom user. Do you see that? Now, let us go to file. 
ls he can see all the files so let me try to edit as tom user see at the bottom do you see read only means he can't edit this correct when i try to insert it's giving me error changing a root only five warning and if i try to save it see you can't uh, save you can't uh, do writing got it you can close it q exclamatory will just close it without saving so Tom user cannot write anything. Understood. This is how you can restrict permissions to different users. In a DevOps group, there might be different people. There might be different uh, permissions on the files. This is how you work with the files and permissions. So Tom doesn't have permission. I want to go back to easy to user. Exit. You become an easy to user. Easy to user has edit permissions. Right, so let's say easy to user is writing. He can write something. Okay, save it, fine. Uh, let's suppose I want to give Tom user any other permissions. How to give the permissions? How to change the permissions? Tom user means others. There are two ways Tom user can get permissions. One is change permissions of other or else add Tom to easy to user group. Correct? Yes. Let's yeah. say permissions of Tom. chmod others means w plus right this is how you give permissions o means other plus means add right permissions okay now here also you can see the permissions listed permissions should be changed do you see here last set read right earlier last set was only read now switch to Tom Tom should be able to edit the file. Go to the location of the file, demo.txt. Already this is there where easy to user has added. Now he can also add. See, he can add, he can save it. Understood? Yes. Again, going back to yes. easy to user. So, this is how you can modify the permissions of any file or folder. This is how. Suppose you want to change the permissions of owner. Owner is represented with u, u plus execute. Okay, because execute is missing, let's say I'll give execute. See, it turns into a green executable. If it is an executable exe, we give this. But just for demo purpose, I have given. See, do you see the change x was added? Suppose if you want to remove u minus x right simple see permission is gone so if you want to give same permissions for all the three categories plus x simple now ls minus l see x is added to all groups do you see all categories let's say not all groups all categories owner owners group others if you want to remove for all minus x if you want to add only to particular category either owner owner means you group means g other means o sorry o. if you want to remove means minus clear everyone that's how you uh, can modify the product There is also another way to give the permissions. This is one way. Another way is categories. Owner categories, so group is G. Uh, sorry, owner is U, group is G, other is O. Right? Another way is O equal to what you want the permissions of others. Let's say RWX on demo. This is another way. O equal to means others should have this permission if you see here yeah o means r w x right okay so that's a simple way to change the permissions uh, but i just want to remove everything here only r should be there that's how you do demo now the permissions would be back if you see only read others has got only read. This is the second way of giving the permissions. Then is that there is another way, okay, which is called the numeric way. 
you can check that in your drive. You go to your Google Drive. Okay, here you have the next one, the next basic commands. Here, if you scroll down, here is the screenshot, right? Which represents the permission. See, numeric mode is more widely used. So to understand this, if you see, there are no permissions means it's like a zero. Execute permissions means X. Write permissions means W. Execute and write. Read. Read and execute. Read and write. Read, write, execute. So this is how you have execute is one. Write is two. Execute plus write means two plus one, three. So that's how you have different set of permissions. So here you can utilize this and give the permissions as Suppose you want to give read, write, execute means what is the value? You can refer to that chart in your uh, uh, drive. So what should be read, write, execute? Seven, right? Read is four. Execute uh, is one. Write is two. So total seven. Second character indicates permissions of group owner. Third one, others. So each character, each uh, literal indicates the permissions of others. So we have given full permissions. Read, write, execute for all. Suppose I want only read for all. What should we do? Read for, or, or else read for owner, uh, read, write for owner, read for everyone else. Can you tell me the... Numbers, read for owner. Four. Four, then read for owner's group. Four. So read, write for owner. Read, write for owner. Read, write. Six. Six. Yes. Mm, then read for owner. Read for others. That's all. Right? Yes. Okay, this is how you can use this method is more widely used. Suppose I want to provide read for owner, only read for owner, no permissions for anyone else. Can you tell me? Four. Four and? iPhone. Zero, zero. Zero, zero. Yeah. Read only for owner. Right? You are giving this permission to your PEM file when you are logging in if you notice. Right, this is secure. Read only permissions. No one can edit. Yeah, these are the different ways yeah. you can permissions to your files. Any questions in this part from anyone? So this is how you can modify the permissions, and uh, yeah, you see here. This is the owner, and this is the group owner. Yeah, also. Yeah. Uh, I have one question. Uh, if we create a back as such, tell me. If we create a user mm. and also create a group of that user, right? Mm. So what exactly the uh, means per uh, what exactly the uh, means uh, we can application for user and groups is if, if they create both in uh, in a single. Uh, Go. It is just creating a user and it will create a group by the same name and he will be added into that group by default. That's it. That's all. That's all? Huh? That's all only? Is yes. There is no purpose or group of... An later on, later on, generally later on, if you want to add any permissions to that group, you can add, you can modify it. That's a default behavior. And also for some applications, like whenever you create some user uh, application, it will be added into the same group, particularly for applications. That's a default behavior. Okay. And see here, this is the owner and this is the group owner, right? If you want to change the owner of the group, that also you can do using chown. Chown, I want mm -hmm. to change the owner as Tom and the group owner as admin. I can do that. And then demo.txt. Permissions. See, to change the owner, you should be root user only. So mm -hmm. now, oh, now ls minus l. 
do you see user mm -hmm. got changed group was also changed right suppose again i want to change this time only the owner okay not the group so simply use don't put colon that will change the owner but that file also save in uh, ect user under right as you mentioned ect user only actually the file is created in a tmp folder right owner changed that's all okay owner changed okay now if you want to change only the group owner that is also possible ch group Okay, CH group. I want to change the group as DevOps of this demo. LS minus. Do you see? Right? Yes. So these are the commands. CH own username, I mean owner, colon, group. This will change both. CH own just this one will change owner. CH group will change only the group. Right? These are the simple operations, the basics of understanding files and their permissions. Right? This basic knowledge you can acquire through practice, through hands-on. Initially, these, com these commands might be tricky or else a bit confusing initially, right? To memorize this because these are all different. Either it is CH mod or CH on. A little bit of confusion will be there through practice, regular practice. Also, it's not that you will practice all of them in one go and master them by tomorrow. That will not be possible with this Linux. Every day you have to practice those commands. Every day keep 10 minutes for Linux. Right? That's how you get used to it. Only thing is you use them, you get used to them and get familiarized with them. Only thing is you have to use, you have to work with them. Otherwise, you will lose uh, familiarity with them. That's the only thing you have to do only way of getting good grip over them so slowly you will gain confidence on those slowly every day spending 10 minutes will help you okay just understand here and spend some time regularly that will help and let me show you simple uh, things file operations i can say history command right it will give you the complete history let's suppose in this history you want to search something. Um, the output of this can be given. Pipe operator. This is called pipe operator, which will connect two commands. History command output will be given as input to grep. Grep means global regular expression. Right? This will grep pseudo commands. Means uh, in the history, I just want to search for pseudo. See? It will list only the commands which has pseudo. So pipe grep is very important and helpful to set the logs or to set some output. This will be helpful. Pipe grep. It will grep whatever starting with sudo. Okay. And uh, suppose, okay, this output, I want to place it in some file. This is called redirection arrow. Greater than symbol is called redirection arrow. I want to put this into some file called log.txt. Log.txt might be created. If you want, you can read it. See, entire thing is placed. Right? Suppose this time I want to search for um, all user commands. Now, if you check the log, see all the commands which has user Whichever command has user word, they were there. But this file has got this. These are gone. Means what this command is doing? What is this command doing? It is overwriting the previous content. Isn't it? Initially, yes. we placed all the commands which has sudo. Later on, I placed all the commands which has user. So, this uh, greater than is rewriting the file, overwriting the earlier content. But let's suppose I want to add again sudo also. But I don't want to overwrite. I want to append it rather than overwriting. There comes double greater than symbol or redirection arrows. This will append. 
if you see the file. Do you see that it got appended rather than rewriting? Yes. Got the difference, everyone? So those are the simple commands called redirection arrows, which will help you make simple file system operations. Are we all good, everyone? Who are new to Linux particularly? These are the very basics. This will help you kind of recap or refresh if you're already a Linux guy. Haima, Rohita, everyone, good to go? Yeah, good to go. Thank you. So these are the basic file operations. We'll be mostly using them to check some, uh, to search some logs. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll be using many other Linux commands as we progress, uh, depending on the context. These are some of the things. And uh, I think I have already shown you, there'll be a file called HCOS release where you can check the details of your operating system. Uh, we are our, like we are using Amazon Linux too, which is sent to his Red Hat based system, right? You can see this. And, uh, and uh, yeah, if you want to check any other like contents of any other page, like I want to check list the contents of any other drive also, you can see this way. Also, if you want to just see few things, less program, right? It will give you page by page. You can give enter to browse through each of them, right? Um, grep operator, redirection arrows. These are all simple operators in Linux. Um, and then let's look into another interesting part. See, we have installed Git on Windows, right? Let us install some packages on Linux. To install packages on Linux, we'll be using something called Package Manager. These package managers differ, and in, in Linux, it's called Yum Package Manager. This package manager will help you installing and installing the packages throughout. If it is Debian-based systems, it's called apt get package manager. Right? So let us install git using this yum package manager how do you do that yum install git see it says you need to be a root user right to install package you need to be a root user you can run with sudo or else you can switch to root sudo su hyphen will help you switch to root now you can do m install git it is asking for confirmation. Give us to confirm. It can install Git, right? You can check now. If you run Git means it will show you a lot of verbose means Git is installed. Or else you can also check this way, Git version, right? So that's how you can. Now you Git is installed. You can work like we did on Linux. You create a directory, do Git in it. Everything is set. Commands are set. Am I making sense? So uh, let us install a few more packages and see a few basics. Uh, do you all know web server? What is a web server? These are general basics which everyone should have in IT. HTTPD is an example. Nginx is an example of web servers. Like you can host some static files. You can host some static files on web servers. Not only that, you can use them for proxy. You can use them for as a load balancer. Right, these are all the different ways a web server can be utilized. Here we'll be using to host some static files. Right, so HTTPD, Nginx, or a web servers, and the default port is port 80. Right, let us see how this works. The default port is port 80, and there'll be something called document root location, particularly for HTTPD. The document root location will be bad www.html, where you should host your code to deploy. So let us install it and let's put some HTML files, static files for deploying. Good to go. Let us install this web server. How do you install it? M install HTTPD. Confirm with yes. It is installed. You have to start the service. How do you start it? System CTL is a utility to manage your packages. System CTL start HTTPD. System CTL, you can check the status as system CTL 
status HTTPD. Right, you can see it's active and running. And here you can see process ID. In Linux, you will see this process ID. And we know that the default port is port 80. But if you want to uh, check on the default, I mean, uh, check the port, you can check this way. Net stat is a simple networking command. Net stat minus LNTUP will show you all the ports. Like here, you can see port 80, right? 3882, port 80. Do you see that? Or else, instead of seeing all the ports, if you want to see only that, pipe grep. HDPD. Or else this process ID actually. 3882. Right? This is how pipe grep can be used. Understood everyone? So if you hit on port 80, we should see this HDPD. Let's see. Get to your EC2 instance. This is our instance. Get the public IP. Hit that on port 80. But that port 80 should be added in the security rules. Here comes the security rules of EC2 instance. The security rules are like adding the ports, right? Inbound rules means allowing incoming traffic. Go here, edit the inbound rules. See, only port 22 is added for SSH. Add here HTTP port. Port 80, any, from anywhere, source anywhere means anyone can connect. Now, if you see on port 80, do you see? You This page is seen means HTTP web server is installed. And it is saying you may now add content to this directory, www.html. This is called document root location. So, if you go there, you can see document root location. And also I have given you can access from anywhere. So you people also can access this. I'm sharing in the Zoom chat. You can try hitting this URL. Can you see that? Try hitting it. You should see that. Now shall we put some HTML file here in this document root location? I'm creating a sample. This will be written by developers. Okay, as an example, I'm just creating it. This will be, this is developer's code. I'm just creating some sample file. Don't worry, you don't need to learn HTML for this. Now that I place this file in this path, I should say this. Can you all see that? Have you all hit that page? Yes, Preeti, just come. Right, you are seeing the page, right? Yes. So that's a simple uh, thing. Yes. And let's say actually security-wise, I shouldn't do this. This is another learning. See, we don't learn AWS separately. Oh. Through the context, we learn different aspects of AWS. Here I'll say only my IP should be accessing it. Can you access it? Try now. Only I can access from my IP address. Yes. You can't it's access it. That's the importance of source here. Again, interview perspective is important. Source parameter in the security groups. Always it's better to choose from where you have to. But for our learning purpose, I'm giving anywhere so that you guys also can access it. Right. This is about a simple HTTPD web server. Having this basic knowledge is important. And... Uh, yeah, this is running on port 80, default. If you want to change the port, yes, you can do. There will be a file under it, see, httpd, httpd conf. Uh, conf. Oh, sorry. This is the folder. CD. All the default ports will be configured here. Uh, okay, inside con, uh, httpd.com. This is where ports, document, root locations will be configured. Do you see here, listen port 80. That's why it's listening on 80. So if you want to change the port, 
you can change it. Let's say I want to listen on 90. Maybe 80 is occupied by something else. You have to rest actually ideal ways first stop it, change the port number, then start it. But I did straight away. Let me see. It should be started on another port. Now, if you see system CTL status HTTPD, it's 4028. So check this net stat minus LNTUP pipe grep 4028. See, it's on port 90. Now, this shouldn't be available. See, it should be available on port 90. It should be on 90. This is not available. But 90 port should be added in the security rule. It's like opening this port. Go here, edit the inbound rules. Uh, let us add port 90. All traffic. Now, yes, it's working. It should work for you as well. Can you also hit that on 90? It is not working. That's how you can change the ports of the services. Are we good? Any questions? Okay, let us install Tomcat as well. What is Tomcat, by the way? Should the application server? Yes. Go ahead, please. It's an application server where Java, Java servlet pages can be hosted. 8080 is the default port. And the document root location kind of is under Tomcat web apps directory. You should put the artifacts Java code here. Right? Like you have it in the web server. So let me install it first. Yum install Tomcat. That's a default port. If you don't change the port means it runs on the default port. Okay, uh, now, uh, yeah, let's see the, let's start Tomcat for systems ETL, start Tomcat. Systems ETL, status Tomcat. These are the simple Linux basic commands, 4387. So, net stat minus LNTUP pipe grep. 4387. See, this is the port actually. And the document, like where you have to host the code is USR share Tomcat. Here again, you will have a directory called web apps. This is where you have to put your Java var file or ER file or jar files created by developers. Developers will write the Java code and they will create this artifact and put it here so that you can see the application running. I don't have any uh, Java code, right? I'll take some sample var file directly. Sample var file download. Sample var file download. Yeah, Apache provides a sample var file for you to test. Copy this. If you want to download anything from a URL on Linux, how do you do that? I want to download something from that URL, right? From this URL. So how can we download something from a URL? W get, right? I run this command from this location. So it is downloaded in this location. Do you see that? It will be also extracted into a folder. Then only you will see. Yes. In two minutes, do you see it got extracted? It is like a zip file. A var file is like a zip file. It got extracted to a folder. Meaning, if you hit this IP on 8080 Tomcat slash sample, endpoint should be the var file name. 
then you will see the application. But before that, you should add that into the security rules. Custom TCP 8080. Anywhere. Endpoint should be the name of the var file. Do you see? That's your application. I'm sharing it in the Zoom chart. You can also hit that. Understood? Those are the basic concepts. This is how you deploy any application deployed on the Tomcat uh, slash sample. Sometimes... What the mm -hmm. application of uh, Tomcat means? What? To... Application of Tomcat. Application of Tomcat? Miss I did use not of... your question. Can you elaborate, please? Can you... Use of Tomcat. Tomcat is an application server. Like you have web server. Tomcat mm -hmm. is an application server where you can host your Java applications. Like okay. sample, this is a Java code. Okay, mm -hmm. this is a Java artifact. Means from Java code, this was built. So they want to run this application. Means this is the process. You have to put it in the web apps directory in this path after installing Tomcat. Where mm -hmm. file is like a zip file. And it mm -hmm. will create a folder like this. You will access the application this on this endpoint like this. This is your application, some sample hello world application. Okay. We are going to see this with our application. Okay, like we'll use some um, Java code. We'll create this. We'll also learn creating this var file. All of this will be automated. We'll learn many things. So I'm just showing the basic and the manual way of. Okay. Okay, and similarly, it runs on port 80. Even you can also change this uh, port number. If you come out of web apps, there will be something like uh, con folder. Here, there will be so many files. You should go to server.xml. This is where ports will be configured. If you scroll down, uh, there will be something like port 80. If I have a question... Mm -hmm. We have more than one instance of Tomcat, then how do we start a particular one? There will be multiple subdirectories under web apps where you post mm -hmm. your code. Each application. Can we specify the directory also while installing the Tomcat? Not the directory, the subparts in the directory can be specified. Like if you, you we are placing that var file in the web apps, right? In the web apps, you will put each var file in a subdirectory. Ah. I'm yeah. not asking about the deploying a new where file, installing Tomcat. Okay. You, you mean simply say, uh, say start uh, Tomcat, right? It started the Tomcat server. But if you have more than one instance, you have, want to start a particular one. You can change. You can configure the document root location. You are talking about the path, right, where you host completely. Right. Do we need to navigate to bin and start or there is other yeah. version? Uh, you can uh, you can configure it. There is some config file where you can even change that. During installation itself, you should do that. Okay. And port number, yes, you can change here and restart like we did for Tomcat. Here is where you have to change it. Yeah. Right. These are the simple. Here, through these uh, demos, you will learn installing packages like Tomcat, starting the services, checking their ports, changing their ports. Also, you got an idea on if it is HTTPD, you should place it on here. If it is a Tomcat, you should place it in the web apps directory. This basic knowledge, everyone, this is like a general awareness which everyone should have, right? We'll be containerizing them, we'll be seeing, automating this process as we progress. So this will help you. Like HTTP, you have Nginx, an advanced web server, I can say. You can try installing this the same way and uh, also look into, like experiment that also, right? After installing HTTP and Tomcat, you can also try out this Nginx thing. Any questions, any more questions on this part? So, uh, okay, these are the different commands we used. And if you notice, what are we doing? First, we are installing the package. Then we are starting the service and so on each one by one. 
can we put all of these commands together? Like, can we just put all of them in a file and execute the file? Right? That's where, yes, that's possible. And that's where shell scripting comes in. All these Linux commands, you can put in a separate file and execute that file, which is called shell scripting. Right? That's the next part where we'll see the basics of shell scripting. And as we progress, we'll see the practical implementation of shell scripting as well. Like, where do you use it? Is it mandatory? All of these questions will be addressed. Any questions? Let me show you the sample shell script. You can give any name. I'm giving sample dot your shell script will end with dot sh. Here you may write a uh, first command will be a shebang line. Shebang line indicates uh, which shell program it's using. There'll be so many shell programs out of which we'll be using born again shell. So this is your shebang line. Starts with a pound exclamatory. And we'll be using bin bash, right? And then now let me use some simple echo command. Echo, this is my first script. You can write a bunch of commands here, right? And save it. You can run the file. Whatever commands you put here will be executed. You may run it as execute. Uh, first run this way, bash. This is how you write. See, the script, whatever you write there will be, you may put multiple Linux commands there and run them all in one go. Got it? This is one way to execute. Or else, if you want to execute, the, run this as an executable. First, you have to provide executable permissions to it. How do you provide executable permissions? We just learned some time back. U plus execute. Provide executable permissions. Now, if you see, do you see it got an execute? So, what is the use? You may run it this way now. Right? That's where you give execute permission. So, we have to learn scripting. Um, Like, what are all the other ways? How do you use parameters? How do you use positional parameters? These are the things we have to learn. That's how you create a shell script. We can take up from here in next class as this is all new for you. Just get all the things set up and done. Tomorrow we shall take up the shell script. Also, we shall go through installing Jenkins tomorrow. We'll get started with Jenkins after shell scripting basics. Any more queries anyone have? And by the way, whatever instance you are using, you can use the same for Jenkins as well. Whenever you have to launch a separate instance, I'll inform you. Until then, you can continue using the same instance. And these are all the commands. Whatever commands I have used today were there in your Google Drive with all the explanation given. Right here are all the commands with all the explanation. Okay, go through it. Even the presentation we use were here for you to refer. If you want, you can refer back. Right, also go through this quiz. Linux quiz, uh, you should go through Linux quiz day two. Quiz portal, go through this quiz. Right, you may complete it except shell scripting is there, but yeah, you can try going through all of this. Do the hands on uh, from the drive and from this website as well. And we shall start with the scripting tomorrow. Any more questions, anyone? Today we have also got understood this security groups of an EC2 instance. That's how we learn AWS and Linux throughout the course as per the context. Any more questions from anyone? We need to pause that uh, EC2 instance, ah, right? Yes, not pause. You have to stop it. Okay, yes. You have to stop it and tomorrow, like whenever you want, you can start it. Don't just leave this running. Okay, you yeah. have a budget of 750 hours per month. So just stop it and start it tomorrow when you have to work. If you terminate means it will shut down and will be deleted. If you yeah. don't want it anymore, you terminate. Otherwise, you just stop and start it whenever you want. It is stopped now. 
right? Right. Any more questions from anyone? Anything else you have? All right, then we'll close here and we'll continue tomorrow. Thank you all, but please complete your hands on and get ready for the next session. See you all tomorrow. Have a good day. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.